right, so for my video project, I chose to discuss the ratio test. Um, during the course of our semester, I really enjoyed working with series and especially the race ratio test. Uh, for me, it was really simple. I was able to understand it and work with it quite confidently, which made it more fun for me, really. So, all right. So, to start out with the ratio test, um, we primarily use it when we have series that have factorials in them or terms that are set to the nth power of some sort. Um, so our ratio test has three rules that we look at that will determine whether a series converges or diverges. So we have our ratio test. So our first rule for our ratio test is that if the limit as n approaches infinity of the absolute value of our series plus 1 over the original series is equal to a value that we'll designate as L. And that value L is less than 1, then by the ratio test, we know that our series, the absolute value of our series, converges absolutely. And since we know that the absolute value of our series converges absolutely, we know that our series, just as it is, is convergent. All right, so now we have our second rule. And the second rule states that if our limit as n approaches infinity of the absolute value of our series plus 1 all over our series is equal to a value L that is greater than 1, then by the ratio test that series is going to diverge. Alright, and that leaves our last rule, number three. And so for number three, if our limit as n approaches infinity is equal to one, then the ratio test was actually inconclusive and therefore we know nothing about the convergence or divergence of our series. Alright, so now that we have established the three rules for our ratio test, uh, I have prepared a few examples to go over for it. Alrighty. So the first example I have is we have a series of 2n factorial all over n squared. And so as I mentioned before, we immediately know that since we have a factorial right here, ratio test is going to be our easiest way to find the convergence of this series. So immediately we're just going to go ahead and launch into our ratio test. And so just as a reminder, the ratio test is the limit as n approaches infinity of our series plus one all over our original series. Or rather, you can multiply by the reciprocal instead of stacking them on top of each other. It's usually easier. So we're gonna go ahead and have, we have our limit as n approaches infinity. And so 2n to the factorial, when we add one to it, actually becomes 2n plus two to the factorial, which is gonna be all over n plus 1 squared. And we're going to multiply this by our original function, or rather the reciprocal of our original function, or not function, sorry, our series. And so we're going to have that. Now at first glance it looks pretty chaotic, um, but there are a few things that we can do to actually simplify this. So for one, this right here 
can actually be simplified to 2n plus 2 all over 2n, or sorry, multiply by 2n plus 1 times 2n factorial. So when we look at this in place of our term right here, we can identify that these right here are going to cancel each other out. So we no longer have to look at those. So if we go ahead and rewrite this, we're going to have our limit. That's going to be our absolute value. We're going to have 2n plus 2 all over 2n plus 1 times n squared. And we're going to have it over n plus 1 squared. And so again, right here, we don't really see anything right off the bat that we're going to be able to simplify. So what we're actually going to do is we're going to go ahead and expand this right down here. And when we do, we're going to divide everything by n squared. So our resulting limit is going to look something like this. All right, and so now when we look at it, we can get rid of a few things. So our n squareds on top and bottom cancel one another out. This value right here we can identify is going to go to zero. So we can go ahead and rule that out as well, which leaves only our one squared or just one. So now when we look at it, it's just going to be these two terms right up here. And when we look at those terms, we know that once we multiply them, it's just going to go on indefinitely. It's going to approach infinity because it's going to continuously grow and grow and grow. There's nothing that's going to cap this limit. So therefore, our limit is going to be equal to infinity, which is greater than 1. So by our ratio test, we can, uh, we can determine that this series is going to be divergent. And so I actually did go ahead and graph these. I know graphing them isn't anything we really did in class, but for me, I think it kind of helps just a touch because especially since we are looking at the ratio of what is our first term of our series with our, the following term, um, it kind of helps to look at how when the series begins to progress that you can see what value it's going to approach that when you change or move to the next step in that series, it doesn't really change uh, the con convergence, divergence, anything like that. So if you go ahead and look at the graph right here, we can see that it's a parabola and for our value, it's just going to go, it, it very, very quickly goes up and just keeps going up to infinity. There's nothing that's going to stop this series or cap it in any sort of way. So we see that for both our first step and our second step in our series that they don't approach anything together. Both of them go towards infinity and that's that. So go ahead and come back here. All right, so now I'm gonna go ahead and move on to my second example. So, for example number two, we have our series of n factorial all over n to the n. Okay, and so again right here we identify we have our factorial, but then we also have our nth power. So immediately we're going to be able to identify ratio tests, immediately what we want to do. and go into it. So we have our limit as n approaches infinity of our series plus 1, our entire series. So we're going to have the limit as n goes to infinity of, we're going to have absolute value, it's going to be n plus 1 factorial all over n plus 1, n plus 1 to n the nth power over n to the n. And so again, as I mentioned in the previous 
example, this right here, we can go ahead and simplify, or rather expand, not simplify, to n plus 1 times n factorial. So immediately we're going to identify these. These two are going to disappear. No longer have to worry about them. Now this one down here is a little bit different. So this one, we see that it's going to be n plus 1 to the n power and n plus 1 to the 1 power. And so from here, we can identify that we're going to go ahead and get rid of this 1 because we have it right there. So all it's going to leave us with then is going to be our limit of n as it goes to infinity, the absolute value of n to the nth power, all over n plus 1 to the nth power. And so right here we see that we have the nth power in common on both our numerator and denominator. So we're going to go ahead and we can get rid of our absolute value brackets now because we know that everything here is going to remain positive. Nothing's going to go negative. So we're going to go ahead and do parentheses. We have n divided by n plus 1 all to the nth power. And this actually goes to uh, e to the negative 1 power, or rather 1 divided by e. And 1 divided by e is less than 1. So then, by our ratio test, this series is, abs is absolutely convergent. So by our ratio test, the absolute value of our series absolutely converges. So therefore, series as is, is, con is convergent. All right. So now again for this one, I also graphed it. Um, so let me go ahead and do this. So we have it right here. So we have our limit graphed right here, and so as we see, both of them, even though one step is higher or less than the other, both of them end up coming down here, and their ratio is the same. Both of them converge to the exact same value, so therefore their ratio is going to be equal, which is why in the ratio test, if something is absolutely convergent, we see that it goes to a specific value, which is less than 1. All right, so now um, I'm sitting at about 13 minutes, but there was another example I wanted to show um, just because I thought this one, well, it's nothing like what we had uh, really seen or anything before. I uh, worked on it in the homework, and I thought it was a pretty cool one just because it kind of combines having like a sequence with a series. So what I have is this right here. So we have this series and we have, so it's an alternating series that begins And so this one on the bottom actually looks like a sequence of numbers. And so this one definitely kind of threw me off a little bit at first when I looked at it, because it's, like I said, nothing we had truly worked on before. Um, but after I had gone through it and stuff, I actually thought it was, well, for one, it's pretty simple. It's not as bad as it might look. And two, it was actually kind of fun for me anyway. So immediately again we have our factorial right up here. We're going to want to do our ratio test. All right, so we're going to begin with our limit as n approaches infinity. So we have this 2 times plus 1 into our sequence. So 
kind of what you think it's going to be. So what we're going to have is that we have m plus 1 factorial up top. And for the ratio test, because since we have absolute value, we can go ahead and get rid of our alternating term because ultimately it's going to disappear. That negative is not going to stick around when we have our uh, absolute value. So I go ahead and just eliminate it right off the bat because I know it's not going to be relevant. So now what we're going to do, we're going to go ahead and divide this by 1 times 7 times 13 continuous. And what we have is n plus 1 times 6n plus 7. Because what we're doing is we're moving on to our next term. And so what we actually are going to end up with is right here. So we're going to go ahead and draw the circle call. Alrighty, and so like I said before, this one we would immediately identify as being truly this. So we're going to go ahead and get rid of our n factorials. And so what we're going to do also is we identify that this right here is the same as this right here. So those ones are going to go ahead and disappear as well, which, like I said, simplifies pretty darn quickly. So we're going to have our limit as n approaches infinity of n plus 1 all over 6n plus and so we know right here, if we go ahead and divide by n, we're left with 1 sixth, which is less than 1. So therefore, by our ratio test, we know that this is an absolutely convergent series. which means that our series as is, is convergent. All right, so that kind of wraps it up for everything I had prepared for my video presentation. I'm sorry, I'm a few minutes over. Like I said, I just, I enjoy doing this one. And so I just kind of wanted to include it in my video. But all right, well, thank you.